interconnected economy. But our own disagreement about rate of depreciation or means of enforcement is where we're departing from mathematically perfected economy because, you know, outside of, you know, natural catastrophes, um, you know, there isn't any, you know, expectable reason uh, under mathematically perfected economy that debts aren't met um, that at least doesn't exist under any other proposition and in almost every conceivable conceivable case would have to exist to a far greater degree. Yes, you cannot eliminate uh, human aberration or deviation from the principle because humans are imperfect and they're going to do these things to, to themselves. The fact is, still, there's a mathematically perfected economy and we are the deviants, you know. So that's how I see it. Whether or not other people would agree with that or not, it matters none to me because the factor is, you know, if you depreciate and pay for anything according to its rate of depreciation, the remaining uh, circulation is always equal to the remaining value of represented wealth. And that's it. That is mathematically perfected economy. So no further argument about that um, from me. Uh, what, what I think is unfortunate is other people, you know, tend to think that, well, we need to put our hands on it, you know. And they don't even have a way that they're going to make it perfect from their perception, which is outside the scope of mathematically perfected economy, which is, you know, the human deviation from the principle. Um, and if we get caught up in, in, in that, not realizing, hey, well, look, okay, so that is true. It's mathematically perfect. Let's follow it for crying out loud. What else have you got to do? Can't, you can't make it more perfect, you know. <laughs> it, it perfectly answers for the variables, and we are determining how we are going to implement our own definitions of those variables in our own deviant manner. But that goes beyond mathematically perfected economy, its, its implementation. So it's already been done. It's already here to do. Um, and, you know, we could do this tomorrow if, uh, if we were such a people, um, if we weren't the subjects of unjust government, I believe we would do it tomorrow. Uh, you know, I mean, everyone would be sending this file around in the morning and, you know, everybody would spend the day listening to it because, you know, there was, you know, no more profitable thing to do. And it was that imperative. And, uh, you know, by the end of the day, we would have decided that, you know what, we're seizing payment on all our debts arising from this system. We're challenging them. We're even too challenging them. Too challenge them. We're we're paying them with a piece of paper, um, and uh, we're only doing that not to uh, uh, relieve ourselves of our debts, but instead to uh, reconstitute our debts to their what they actually comprise, which was originally a promissory obligation to pay principal out of circulation. And the reason it is that, even though we might have agreed to something else stupidly, is the fact is that the banking system pre only pretends to be a creditor. It never gave up anything equal of value to the debt which ostensibly exists to it and which it claims exists to it. And, and we have to challenge that. And we have to prevail over that because it is wrong, wrong, wrong. Thanks so much for listening. It's an honor to be heard at a time when all of us so direly need to understand these vital matters. Mm -hmm.